or I can do it too. Mark is with us, but I don't know if he just now joined or what have you. Yeah. You're recording too. Very nice. I am. Uh, there should be music. Oh. Yeah, I didn't check the mark. I didn't check the mark. The there should be music, box. by the way. Yeah, Mark, did you want to share your screen? Uh, oh, I'm doing it. Okay, sure. Yes, please. <laughs> you did such a good job yesterday. There we go. One second. You guys hear that? Yes, perfect. Okay.
is there more after this or is that it? I believe that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. What a slide to end on. But great. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for being here and welcome to the SIP 2022 plenary session um, for our presentation day. This is the time when we all come together at the end of our morning of presentations to kind of celebrate the end of our summer and the beginning of what comes next. Um, thank you and welcome. I know there's people here from all over the world, so it's really exciting for me to welcome you here to, um, to our virtual place in Santa Cruz. And we'll begin our time together by sharing the UC Santa Cruz land acknowledgement. The land on which we gather is the unceded territory <clears throat> of the Awaswa-speaking Aw Yupi tribe, the Yamamuxin tribal band comprised of the descendants of the indigenous people taken to missions Santa Cruz and San Juan Bautista during Spanish colonization of the Central Coast is today working hard to restore traditional stewardship practices on these lands and heal from historical trauma. At times like this, when we gather to celebrate, it's important to appropriate to acknowledge where we've come from, as well as to look ahead to where we're going, which is what we're here to do today. So as we take time to reflect on the summer we have spent together, we also look to the future and we celebrate each of you who've been part of the summer and are now part of the story of the work that we do in the world today. So today we will hear from several people who've been involved in SIP 2022, from interns to mentors and parents. And we'll also share about the work that we're doing with the Science Internship Program and the Creating Equity in STEAM umbrella of programs and initiatives. This is work that you are all part of now, and we hope that you'll find ways to stay involved. Even though we're saying goodbye today, this is certainly not the end. So first, as you saw on this slide, we're going to start out with some speakers from our SIP 2022 interns, who I'm really excited to welcome. I've met with each of them in the last couple of weeks to talk about sharing today, and I'm just thrilled to introduce each of them to you. Our first speaker is Tejas Mahesh, which I keep uh, conflating his first and last name and calling him Tehesh, but Tejas Mahesh is here today. Um, he's coming from San Ramon, California where he's a rising senior at California High School. Uh, Tejas participated in Psychology 18, a comment on fake news, and he's been a regular face at every speaker and workshop offering that we've had this summer. So thank you so much for being part of the program, Tejas, and welcome. You can unmute and take it away. Thank you so much, Sierra, for that great introduction. Thank you to all the interns for your energy and questions. Um, I would also, like to thank all the mentors for guiding us through a summer. For some of us like us, it was our first internship and me personally, it was my first internship. I feel rather privileged to be here. And now uh, to all the interns, a message for you. It may seem as though our research is over, but we're not done researching about ourselves. Broadly speaking, doing research is about understanding structures and systems that we live in, but on a personal level, we're individuals seeking who we are and our place in our community, state, nation, world, and even the universe. It is a long journey, a journey that I think even our mentors and the SFE staff are uh, still on. It is hard to understand the structure of society and the world, why people take decisions they take, why particles move the way they move, and why we have different results than what we hypothesize. But it seems to all researchers and interns that we must understand structures and systems to find who we are and our place in the world. The acronym STEAM stands for science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Each and every letter functions to provide a better sense of the world. Science is about understanding existing structures and systems. Technology and engineering is about building structures. Mathematics is the language that describes structures to its minutest detail. Art, however, is the odd one out. Art 
is the inner and outer beauty of the structure, what I consider to be the truth. It takes courage to be on the edge between the known and the unknown, trying to make hypotheses about the shadow, the unlit areas outside our domain of a library, or our own personal Jungian shadow. Whatever may happen, we must find a way to integrate the shadow into ourselves and add it to the large library of knowledge that we currently store. There may be a time in the future when you feel like you're trying to achieve something, but it constantly seems elusive and out of reach. It may feel like you're fighting a fog, that no clear plans exist, that the goal you're trying to reach is only a figment of your imagination. When this occurs, focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. Focus on improving your strengths little by little. Gradually, your stronghold will become stronger. By focusing on your strengths, your weaknesses will shore themselves up. Weirdly, you will achieve your goal at the end. And understandably, your eyes won't be able to see through the fog and darkness. Therefore, you must trust yourself to reach your goal. If there's anything I would like to say, it's this. Listen. Listen to others. And most importantly, listen to yourself. What do you want? What is your true self telling you? The truth rings with clarity, brilliance, depth, and richness. The fundamental and the overtones are just pure. You can feel the truth vibrate through your body, soul, and mind. You can see the truth even if you are blindfolded because the truth shines brightly. As researchers and interns, we seek the truth. The truth pleases our mind, our soul and body. It provides a sense of satisfaction that nothing else could or can do. We as an individual must seek our own truth for the betterment of our community, state, nation, world, the universe. We must seek the truth, the best version of ourselves when our potential becomes kinetic. So thank you to all and good luck on the next part of your journey. Thank you so much, Tejas. Our next speaker uh, lives right here in the Monterey Bay area. Guadalupe Cervantes lives in Santa Cruz, California and is a rising junior at Gonzalez High School. Uh, Guadalupe participated in Sociology 03, Latina Rural Girlhoods in the United States, and has the dubious distinction of being what we call a sibling with two older siblings who have also been SIP interns. I'm so happy to, that we're able to continue the family tradition by having you at SIP this summer. Uh, welcome, Guadalupe. It's your, you're up whenever you're ready. Hi, everybody. Um, good afternoon. My name is Guadalupe Cervantes. I'm from Gonzales, California. I'm currently a rising junior in Gonzales High School. Um, my project this summer was social. We learned about Latina rural. Our research was basically just based on how Latina girls uh, start from migration with their parents and they have to grow and learn in these small towns, but then also have to um, get used to moving out and exploring new things and their financial hardships, their education, how they were treated in, um, in their childhood and just basically how they learned to grow and be better in their adulthood. Um, so like Sierra mentioned, I am a sibling. Um, my two older brothers, Dylan and Aiden did this uh, program since like, for the past three years um, and watching them just kind of be so passionate about their work and be so excited about the program, being able to experience these kinds of things also got me very excited. And although like my program wasn't in person, um, I still had a very great time. I learned a lot of new things like um, teamwork, how to do research. And this kind of helped me um, on my college, on my journey to college, because I'm currently only a junior, um, it helped me get a little bit of, what do you say, um, a little bit of experience in research and helped me decide that I want to go into sociology in college or some kind of sociology psychology. And I'm very grateful to SIP for that, for giving me that opportunity to be able to experience it before I go off and make this big decision of what I want to do with my life. 
So um, while I kind of got the little feel of online, um, my brother, Aiden Cervantes, he got both. So he's here with me to kind of talk about both and talk about his experience too. Um, hi everyone, my name is Aiden Cervantes. Uh, I did SIP my 2019 and 2020 um, year. I was part of those two cohorts. Um, I'm currently a sophomore, rising sophomore at UCLA studying Chicano studies. Um, and yeah, I just kind of wanted to, you know, tell you guys congratulations for completing this summer. I know it's probably a little stressful and challenging, um, but you guys did it and you guys were all cho chosen here for a reason, whether it be because of the great academic success or because you are very smart people. So I just wanna congratulate all you interns um, and kind of just tell you that I know it was kind of hard and some of you may have been suffering with imposter syndrome or you know stuff like that, but just to know that like you're here for a reason and that um, you guys all did it and that you're very successful. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to let you guys know that it's a great stepping stone. It definitely has helped me with classes and kind of getting job and internship opportunities in college and throughout high school so if you're thinking about whether you should come back or you know if you kind of want to do another internship never feel like you're not um you're not like smart enough or you're not good enough for it apply and you know just kind of do the best you can and um yeah so i just want to thank the sip family um for allowing me to kind of work those two years on different projects um, and for kind of always supporting me and also my family with my couple of siblings who have also done SIP. And I hope that um, my younger siblings will also be able to do SIP. So I just want to, you know, thank everyone here. And um, yeah, so I wish you all the best in future endeavors. And you just know that you guys are all very smart and successful students and you'll do great things in the future. So to kind of continue what he said, congratulations, everybody. And I'm, I'm also very grateful to this program, very grateful to everybody who helped me. <clears throat> Sierra, um, Roxana, my mentor, and all of my little sit buddies in my group. Um, I'd also like to thank, you know, my family, because especially my siblings, they were a really big help during all of this since they've been through it all already. And just a great little support system for me. And to my friends too, because they're here watching me. I love all of you guys. And thank you so much to the whole SIP family. Thank you so much, Guadalupe. And it was just wonderful to see you, Aiden. My cheeks are actually hurting a little bit. I haven't seen you in a while. And I was like, he's all grown up. Our baby's all grown up. So it's been wonderful to get to know your old family. Please say hello to your mother from us as well. Um, our third uh, SIP intern that I'd love to welcome this morning is Yael Zayats. Uh, she is coming to us from Mountain View, California, where she's a rising junior at Mountain View High School. Um, Yael participated in Astronomy 18 time series spectroscopy of RR Lyrae stars in the Milky Way. And I only recently met Yael after hearing from Raja and Anand about her incredible engagement in her research group this summer and her enthusiasm with organizing meetups offline for some of the Bay Area SIP interns. Um, we're so glad that you're here this summer, Yael, and it's just been wonderful to get to know you a little bit. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you so much. So hi, my name is Yael. I am a junior at Mountain View High School. Uh, this summer I did astronomy, specifically Astronomy 18. So a little bit about myself is that I came into this program with a little bit of a previous astronomy knowledge. I studied it at school and through Science Olympiad, but I never had any research or a university level experience. So going in, I was really, really scared because I was like, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to be so behind even before we, we started on the first day. But it wasn't like that. The team that I worked with, so three other interns, Roy, Doug, and Yuting, my mentors, and our faculty, our faculty member, Professor Raja, and others in the astronomy world were super helpful from the get-go and got us caught up immediately and were just always there to help us whenever we needed it. Now, the reason we had to learn so much prior to actually starting this work is because the project wasn't made specifically for us. It was an ongoing project that we were tasked with. So I think that that was my favorite part of SIP, the actual getting to work on genuine research. 
And I got to learn skills that actual astronomers used. I used programs that actual astronomers used in data collection and reduction. And I got actual results from everything I did. So a little bit about my project is that it pertained to our library stars, which are a type of star that changes in brightness with a very well-known pattern. This pattern can be used for calculating a lot of things, such as the mass of the Milky Way, the distance to these stars, the internal physics of these stars, and so much work. But our work was specifically focused on identifying these patterns, uh, as well as processing raw data that we got from other researchers. The process to actually get there was pretty difficult. We didn't know anything of what was going on at the start. We had to learn Python and IDL, as well as get used to the VPN that UCSC uses and Unix commands. But I really enjoyed it. I think it was really fun working with the undergrads, the grad students, and the postgrads that were in our group. And seeing everyone struggle together was really inspirational to an extent. And it was also just really funny to work together and cry over the countless errors that we would constantly get. I also had the opportunity to join Raja and a couple of other researchers while they were doing observations um, through their Shadow of the Scientist program. And that was really fun. We got on Zoom with people from all around the world. I think there was one person from Zimbabwe, a couple from Europe, a bunch from America. And we got to see how astronomers actually work on a day-to-day -day basis. Overall, this program really helped show me that astronomy is something that I want to go into in the future, or at least study in university. And I've been lucky enough that I'll get to stay with the project for the rest of the year. So yeah, let me screen share. This is, this is the fun part. Uh, one second. Um, do I have screen sharing abilities? You can share now. Yeah. You can share now. Okay. So other than the work itself, SIP also had a lot of fun social events. So there were movie nights, constant conversations, and like all of the Discord servers, outings, boba runs, and more. Uh, I'm lucky enough to live in the Bay Area, so most of the SIP interns were decently close to me. So I got to meet a lot of them because everyone was really committed to getting the full experience of this program, despite being entirely online. We went to brunch, we went boating on a lake, we got almost got stuck on said lake, <clears throat> had a day out in San Francisco, we went to the pier in the Exploratorium, we had a Safeway run, a picnic, just really did absolutely everything we could. These are definitely people that I will keep talking to throughout the rest of the year, and I'm really glad that I've met them. Here's our San Francisco outing. Uh, special thanks to Anisha for making sure that we didn't get lost. We got lost multiple times without her, but it turned out okay. We all got home. Here's our picnic. We made friends with a couple geese. We sang YMCA on a boat in the middle of the lake for the talent show, actually, which was another fun sip thing. And we had a picnic. So, yeah, these are just a couple of our outings. We have another one tonight that I'm really, really excited about. But, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. my. My speech wasn't as like inspirational or advice giving as the last two, and I don't have very much advice to give, but the one thing I can say is that you should just really try everything possible and everything that you've given, that you're given, it really cannot turn out badly. It will go well. And it's just an overall amazing experience. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yale, for being part of the program this summer. We always say it 100 times during the summer, you get out what you put in, and you've really just engaged in the program so much this summer. Thank you for being here. Um, we're now going to start shifting gears into our mentor speakers, who will both be sharing about their research and about their experience with SIP and their interns this summer. I'm really excited to welcome our first mentor speaker, Saul Villegas. He's a second year SIP mentor in our newest subject offering, Art, Culture, and STEM. And Saul is a graduate student in the Digital Arts and New Media program at UC Santa Cruz. 
And this summer he hosted SIP interns in his research project, Art Culture in STEM 01, Art and Science, Visual Storytelling Through Archives, Research and Design. Um, he's played an important part in the evolution of SIP being a STEM program and moving into being a STEAM program the last couple of summers. And I learn and grow every time I talk with him. So I'm really happy to introduce him to you all today. Welcome, Saul, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Sarah, for that um, introduction. I feel so shy now. I don't know what else to say after that. But thank you so much. Uh, I think that uh, my experience with you as a first contact um, is one of the reasons I, I kept thinking, wow, this program must be amazing because they have like the front person there just making sure that even someone like myself um, is connected to this program. So I have just seen everything that you've done for this program. And I think you're amazing. And I think uh, Raja also, everyone else that works for a SIP uh, program um, is just a, a really good resource for people like myself, younger folks that are trying to uh, bridge into uh, the university uh, system. So I think that um, as a whole, SIP uh, the SIP inter internship program um, is just a, a landing space for people to learn and to figure things out um, and have a space for people to express themselves. Um, and so with that being said, um, I did uh, start the internship program. Um, it was the inaugural sort of art and science um, course last year and uh it was a little uh nerve-wracking and I really didn't know how I was in, in, in gonna introduce my methods of uh, traditional art making and digitizing archives I was like what do I do but I uh, ended up having a really uh good um faculty advisor that I uh, who was Professor Raja's uh, friend that um also uh was able to help me do a really interesting um program that we did a uh, coffee uh, painting with medium sort of uh, we transitioned storytelling with uh, you know how do you um, talk about the social as aspects of like where coffee is from what does this uh, mean in, in di different contexts of the world and and so I think that um, having that first uh, experiment sort of a, of a program to try to introduce archives into um, storytelling and sort of uh, research-based um, uh, materials to try to um, put your, your research out there this year uh, really went a little bit further into uh, something that connects to my own research. And I, I'm going to share my screen um, so that I can um, read off of this slide uh, because I think it's important for everyone to know who this person is. I think she is an amazing contact. Um, I met uh, Jennifer Parker when I was my, uh, doing my undergrad uh, at uh, UC Santa Cruz. And uh, I'm just going to read that I would like to thank the SIP founder and faculty director Raja and assistant director Sierra, who together and with their team have produced an amazing array of research projects for talented students, such as the ones highlighted in this year's SIP Summer 22 uh, research project, ACS01. My faculty advisor, Jennifer Parker of Open Lab Collaborative Research Center has guided me through art and science driven projects such as virtual world building and immersive design with an emphasis on reimagining ways to disseminate archives. Thank you for your insight and for your research in the field. It has inspired me to spawn my own structure of presenting materials that are accredited to your structure of teaching. I appreciate your help in my undergraduate career. It has prepared me for professional projects such as the SIP program to benefit from, to extend knowledge to other students and the public at large. Uh, thank you to University of California, Santa Cruz for allowing such learning opportunities to exist and to fund the SIP program to continue to advance, diversify, implement ways of progressing in academia with inclusion and respect for all. And so um, with that being said, I sort of just wanted, you know, I know that when the interns presented earlier, I just wanted to sort of go through their folders and so you can kind of check out some of their their spaces, you know, um, some of these interns really went out of their way to look at objects and links and, uh, you know, ways of viewing the virtual space as, as a way to um, have um, an exhibition space, you know, during the pandemic, uh, a lot of institutions, uh, galleries, um, 
places where you would normally find information were shut down. So there was a lot of creative ways that artists um, and instructors, educators had to um, kind of think of ways of how do you present these information that um, people are working on um, to to the grander public, you know, or, you know, to the people that are in academia, like, how do you uh, relay that type of information? So there was, there was a lot of creativity that happened and a lot of uh, emphasis on virtual world building. And so what that did was really um, have a way for people to, um, you know, that are people of color that sometimes uh, are, it's very difficult to um, enter certain gallery institutions because there there's marginalized um, or there's like these type of barriers that happen because of conversations that are put up front in certain gallery settings. So even the gallery setting itself in virtual world building is really a way to have uh, the student researcher sort of uh, dive into what it is that they're trying to uh, look at with their own research, a way to express themselves. Um, and another way to do that was uh, for them to do it in, in a, this expressive sort of designed uh, base where they were able to sort of model their own uh, world uh, as they see it. And so it was a really good bridge to not only have um, them do that, they really express themselves um, in different ways. You know, this is just um, an example. I had my interns really do, um, you know, a timeline with uh, their research journals that sort of timelined um, sections of the research. And, and so it was a really fun way so that they can kind of have that art journal slash research experience. They also wrote uh, a research uh, assignment. And so um, I just wanted to uh, show that, you know, with, um, this course, they really got a little bit of everything. They got a they got a, a way to understand how to do research, how to think like an artist, how to um, archive these materials that are really important that you get to see in library settings, but also introduce their voice so that it's not this regurgitation of information, but that at some point they get to in, introduce who they are and what they how they see the world, and so that they can attach something new as you move forward. So I hope that um, I was able to do that for the interns and for the SIP program this year and moving forward that there's a foundation put there so that other people that are working with art and science projects can do the same for the program and for the university. Thank you. Thank you so much, Saul. Um, really appreciate the uh, time and effort you put into being a SIP mentor. You inspire me every day, as Sierra says, every time I talk to you. Um, I'm just buoyed by your um, all your qualities as a mentor. Um, um, Sierra, do I get to introduce Ivana next? You do. Okay. It's my great pleasure to um, to introduce a first time SIP mentor. Um, um, Ivana is someone I've known for many years. She's an astronomy researcher. I know her in that uh, context. Um, Ivana, please forgive me if I get any of the details wrong, you should correct me, but um, I, I believe Ivana received her undergraduate degree from the U uh, University of California, San Diego, did I get that right? And um, went on to uh, doing a PhD in astronomy and um, um, in the astronomy department at the California Institute of Technology at Caltech in Pasadena in Southern California, uh, where she worked on the Andromeda galaxy and galaxies in the local group. Uh, she went on to win not one, but two very um, uh, sort of a combination of, uh, two, uh, of postdoctoral fellowships, the uh, Carnegie Princeton uh, postdoctoral fellowship. Um, uh, Carnegie Institution is a powerhouse in astronomy research. Princeton University is a powerhouse also in astronomy research. Um, Ivana currently holds uh, a Carnegie Princeton uh, postdoctoral fellowship. And uh, there's one more thing I wanted to say about Ivana, and that is she is my, um, she's my grand student. Her uh, PhD advisor was my PhD student. And um, um, Ivana, please take it away. Tell us about your research, tell us about your SIP experience. Thank you for the introduction, Raja, and you got everything right, by the way. Um, 
All right, so I'll start by sharing my screen. And okay, can you see my actual presentation and not my notes? It's presenter mode right now. We do so we see, see your notes. notes. Okay. Let me stop doing this and retry. Still doing it. Okay, what about now? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Uh, so, hi everyone. I'm Ivana Scala. As Raja said, I'm a Carnegie Princeton Fellow. Um, I'm currently at Princeton University in New Jersey. And uh, today I'll be talking about um, a little bit of background concerning the research project that the SIP interns did this summer that I helped mentor, um, again, as well as my experience in the program. So I also want to acknowledge Amanda Quirk, who was the primary mentor for this project, and she really was uh, the pedagogical lead. Um, and Amanda is a uh, postdoc at Columbia, but was previously at UC Santa Cruz. Um, but this research project, which was titled Investigating the Kinematical and Chemical Structure of Andromeda Stellar Disk, is a project that is very closely related to um, some of my recent research, as well as Amanda's. And I also want to, of course, acknowledge our excellent team of interns, Akhil, Kesyat, uh, Nishant, Sean, and Edward, who I hope that the interns in the audience have an opportunity uh, to meet if they haven't already. All right. So I'll start by motivating the project, right? So why are we interested in studying the Andromeda galaxy in particular? So before I can really get into that, we need to first address why we're interested in studying the local universe in the first place. So the reason is that local galaxies provide detailed views into the distant past. So here I just have a schematic that's representing the evolutionary history of the universe um, from the Big Bang going to the present day, right? So we have the formation of the first galaxies at some point, and then they evolve into these beautiful spiral structures that we see in the nearby universe, or here I'm showing M33 as an example. So the advantage of studying nearby systems is that we can study them in a truly exquisite level of detail. We can resolve individual stars within these galaxies, um, and we can use that to reconstruct events that happened within these galaxies billions of years ago. So in that sense, they're very complementary to other studies of galaxy formation, right? Where you might be looking at galaxies uh, as they were forming billions of years ago in the past, but those galaxies will look, you know, more like blobs um, compared to the lovely view that we get in nearby galaxies. So another reason that we're interested in M31 is because it's a galaxy like the Milky Way. We think that they actually look very similar. Um, so this is currently the best view that we have of the Milky Way to date. It's an all sky image from something known as the Gaia survey. And within this image, there are 1 billion stars or about 1% of the stars in the galaxy. So you can see a number of different components here within this image. You can see the disk, of the galaxy, which is composed of stars and gas that are rotating in an orderly fashion. You can see the bulge, which is a, a spheroidal component at the center. It's one of the most ancient parts of the galaxy. And there's this other component called the stellar halo, um, which is primarily composed of stars. It's diffused and goes out to a large radius. We also have some satellite galaxies, the Magellanic clouds that are contained within this image. So this is what the Milky Way looks like, right? And we think that Andromeda has a fairly similar structure. We think that both the Milky Way and Andromeda have a similar structure overall. So going back to Andromeda, it's the only massive Milky Way-like galaxy that we can currently hope to study in a level of detail comparable to what we have achieved in the Milky Way. It's because it's located fairly nearby. It's about only over 2.5 million light years away, um, which is actually pretty close. 
uh, we have to go much farther out in the universe to find another uh, massive spiral galaxy. Um, so it's also uh, huge. We get a lovely view of it on the sky. So here I'm showing the moon to scale compared to the disk of Andromeda. And we can kind of rotate it and, and embed it within a really deep image of this galaxy to really emphasize how truly large it is on the sky. And we can see a lot of the same structural components, including the disk. Um, and we have a bunch of other things like intact satellite galaxies like M33. We have a stellar halo. We have these things called streams. Um, so it's just really a great laboratory to study galaxies. So you might be wondering, um, how do we learn about Andromeda? So what we do is we use stellar spectra, or at least this is one approach to learn about the galaxy. Um, so in much of my research and also in the work of um, the SIP interns I helped mentor this summer, we use stellar spectra, uh, specifically those collected from the 10 meter Keck telescopes on the summit of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. Um, so this is an example of what some spectra look like. We have a two-dimensional spectrum for a number of stars. Each one of these bright lines corresponds to a single star, um, sort of in the X direction, and the Y direction corresponds to a spatial dimension. So it might be a little bit difficult to see, but there are actually uh, dips in the light when you look at the two-dimensional spectrum, right? There's some light missing. And those correspond to absorption features once you collapse it down to one dimension. Um, and we can use these features to learn about stars. Um, for example, we can measure their uh, motions in the universe relative to us um, based on the known wavelengths of where these features are. So that's just one example. So in particular, um, the SIP interns used data from the Spectroscopic and Photometric Landscape of Andromeda Stellar Halo, or SPLASH survey. Um, so this is really a survey um, that was pioneered by Rajas and others, um, such as one of my own mentors, uh, Carolina Gilbert. So it contains over um, 20,000 spectra of individual red giant stars located within M31. Um, so Every time you point the telescope, you can observe hundreds of stars simultaneously. And this is with the Deimos instrument on Keck, right? So what kind of information can we get from the spectra and also uh, combining it with information from imaging? We can um, learn about the positions of the stars on the sky within the galaxy. It's all viewed in projection though. We can learn about their motions or velocities. And from their colors, we can learn about their chemical composition. We can also learn about that from their absorption features as well. So prior studies of Andromeda's disk using stellar kinematics, specifically from the splash survey, and sorry, by kinematics, I mean motions, um, have led to new discoveries in the past. So I'm really talking about this just to emphasize the discovery potential of these types of studies. So all the way on the left, I have an image of Andromeda's disk, and I'm showing the location of um, some of this data targeting the northern half of the disk. So based on this, you can get motions for stars, and you can construct some histograms of the motions in different regions of the galaxy. And the galaxy looks very different depending on which part you're looking at. Um, so based on this, we discovered that there is a stellar halo component that overlaps with the disk of the galaxy. And also learn that the disk is um, very hot, which, which means that it's likely very thick as well. So this raises an important question compared to what we know about the Milky Way. So in the Milky Way, we have a two component disk, one that's thin and one that is thick, right? So is this the same case for Andromeda? And it's not a trivial question to answer because we are viewing this galaxy in projection up on the sky, right? We're located within the Milky Way. So when we study the Milky Way, it's easier for us to learn certain things. Um, 
So there is one study in the southern part of Andromeda that looked at the motions of the stars and found evidence for perhaps a two-component disk. But they were also looking pretty far out in the galaxy, right? Um, so this is pretty different to the area that we're studying in the north. So the central question of our SIP interns project was really, do we see evidence for this two-component disk structure in the northern half of Andromeda's disk? And here I just have an example of some of these histograms of the motions of stars in Andromeda. So the disk feature here is actually that prominent peak located at negative 100 kilometers per second. That's a heliocentric velocity, so relative to the sun. Um, and you can also see that you have stars that are at much more negative velocities, and those correspond to stars in the stellar halo of Andromeda. Right, so if there was a thicker disk and a thinner disk component, what would they look like in this space? So what were the main project goals for this summer? Um, so some of them were just learning how to model velocity distributions for the students along the line of sight to the disk. And this is something that they did using Gaussian mixtures. Um, so if we go back to this plot real quick, you can see that we're just fitting the histograms with some simple Gaussian distributions. Um, where each different Gaussian represents a different uh, structural component within the galaxy. So our approach in the past has just been, been to assume that there is a thick disk and a stellar halo. So part of it is really assessing whether this provides a good description of the data or not. Is there something that we're missing here? And then also um, the SIP interns wrote their own code to fit uh, three component models instead of just two component models. And they also looked at one component ones to cover, you know, all their bases uh, to see how that fit compared to what we typically assume. So initially we were hoping that we might be able to get to information about chemical composition, um, but this is already a lot of work. And the thing is when Amanda and I were planning this project, we just wanted to make sure we had plenty of things to do in case um, we ended up getting pretty far along in the project, right? So you always want to design research projects that have room to grow into the future. Um, so again, though, the, the first parts of this project, though, that involve the velocity modeling, though, um, end up leading to an important result on its own. So if you were in room four earlier, you may have already heard about the results from our SIP interns projects, but um, the first major part of their project was really dividing the survey area into various subregions on the sky. So we did this because we're actually looking at a very large area on the sky. Um, so the disk spans about uh, 60,000 light years in terms of its uh, radial length, right? So the our view of the disk is evolving a lot over that region. So we really needed to break it down into smaller components to make sure that we were doing a decent job of modeling it. And they did this by um, measuring the projected radius from the center of Andromeda for each star and also uh, the position angle. So the angle relative to north um, for each star. Um, and then we then measured that relative to the major axis of the galaxy, which you can kind of see here in this plot all the way on the right from some of my own work. Um, the major axis is located along that central band of stars in the image. And that's sort of just that axis that describes the main orientation of Andromeda's disk. So their final results were pretty interesting. Um, so these are some of the plots that, again, our SIP interns um, produced. And the main takeaway from fitting these, you know, various component models to the data was that uh, for the majority of the regions on the sky, a two component model fit best, which means that Andromeda's northern disk is thick. So this is potentially unlike what we see in the Milky Way, um, which means that something different may have been going on in terms of Andromeda's evolutionary history. Um, and this is something that's important to understand for our broader understanding 
of galaxy formation. Um, so it's uh, pretty exciting to have this uh, finally confirmed in the north of M31. Sorry, I keep saying if I keep saying M31, it's the same as Andromeda. Um, so as Raja said, this was my uh, first time being a SIP manager in the program. So just reflecting both on how we structured the program as mentors and our experience within it. Um, so we really wanted our interns to get, you know, the appropriate scientific context in the field. So um, we read paper introductions of a couple of relevant papers. Um, the SIP interns took notes and we really just made sure to discuss anything that was unclear and always provide an opportunity to ask questions and be available to answer them. Um, I think the uh, project was really collaborative, which is something that was really nice to see from a mentor's perspective, um, collaborative in terms of note taking, but also just working on every aspect of the project, including the final presentation. Um, we always tried our, our best to outline very next clear steps, which we sort of called homework um, after every single meeting. Um, and we had meetings twice per week, which we always tried to record every time. Um, so those who were not able to attend could take a look at it. Um, and we also had sessions that were not only discussing, you know, the direction of the project, but, you know, just actively debugging um, Jupyter notebooks and trying to work together to make progress on this project. Um, so one thing I really enjoyed about SIP was um, at least the remote nature of the program I know is not always ideal for everyone, but it does really enable many people across the world to participate. Um, so we worked across the globe. I really enjoy working with people from all over the world. And even if it can be difficult, you know, trying to accommodate everyone's time zones. But I think that's, again, one thing that's great about SIP. Um, we had team building exercises, especially early on in the program, just to get, you know, the interns to talk to one another, get to know one another, reveal a little bit about ourselves. Um, these are all somewhat related com uh, concepts, but, you know, just really emphasizing work-life balance I mean, obviously, all of the SIP interns participating in the program are very ambitious, precocious students. You know, even though it's the summer, they often have a lot of things going on, sometimes taking summer courses or other ob obligations, right? So we really wanted um, our interns to enjoy the research without it contributing to additional stress within their lives. So we tried to make sure to emphasize that as well. And also reaffirm personhood. And by that, what I mean is really the intrinsic worth of every human being independent of their scientific work. Um, so I think a lot of people who want to go into science end up sort of defining themselves by their ability to do science and their perceived level of intelligence and things like that. This is something that I have been subject to as a scientist. Um, but we are so much more than just scientists. It's just one aspect of our identities. Um, so just trying to emphasize that sooner rather than later. <laughs> um, so that's basically it for uh, my summary of the SIP program. So this is just a screenshot that we took during one of our Zoom meetings when everyone was present. Um, we had a really great team. I was so impressed with everyone's work. Um, and I've been impressed with the presentations from the other SIP teams as well. Um, so it's really been a joy to participate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ivana. That was really inspiring. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, appreciate that you decided to um, take a chance on SIP, not having done it before, but um, uh, I know you're um, Amanda and your interns uh, got a lot out of it, and, and I'm, I'm glad you had a positive experience. Um, Sarah, would you like me to share my slides, or would you like to share? Um, I, I, I have them up, so I can share them right away if you'd like me to. Yeah, 
Why don't you take it away? I think it'll be easier for you to control them yourself while you're speaking. Got you. Will do. Will do. Okay. I have, let me just take a minute. There we go. There they are. Um, Raja's with us today from India. So it's 1.30 in the afternoon, 1.36 in California, which means it's 2 a.m. in India. Is that correct, Raja? That's right. It is. It is. But uh, Thank those you of for you who... staying up late and hanging out with us. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not staying up late. That's the, those of you who know me know that uh, this is uh, completely far for the course for me to be up at this hour working. Yeah. Um, so it's, um, it feels very normal. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I want to make sure I don't uh, run out of battery. No, I don't. I'm, I'm good. Um, so, um, Sarah, you've been through a few of these slides. So let me, let me, is this the right point to be jumping off? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so, SIP is in its, has just completed its 14th year. And I feel as proud as the, as the fa father of any 14-year-old would. Um, it is, um, you know, it's a teenager. It's had its growing pains. It's um, difficult to deal with at times, and, uh, but it's an endless source of joy and pride to us, this program. And I say to us, the, I will introduce the SIP team. And um, the, um, before I do that, I want to uh, reflect a little bit on um, 2022. Um, it's, um, it was difficult for us to come to terms with the fact that COVID-19 is still a thing, still a threat, uh, especially for an international program like ours where it's not easy for parents to just drive to campus and take their kids home if they fall ill. Um, it was very difficult for us to make the decision to remain 100% online the third year running, right? This was 2022. We had done this in 2020 for the first time, gone online, that is, 100% um, online. Um, and we decided to go online a third year in a row. And it was driven by the preferences of our mentors and um, really by the situation that presented um, itself to us at the end of January of 2022, when we were starting to line up plans for housing. We are hopeful and we are planning for a hybrid program uh, with full online and full in-person components available in 2023 and beyond. And let me be a little more specific about that. We have two weeks of research prep. Um, that will be online. That's always been online because we don't have housing available um, on campus those first two weeks. So that'll be online. Um, um, in the past, we've had a shuttle program where students were local to Santa Cruz have been able to come in on the shuttle. So it hasn't been completely online for everyone, for the locals, it's been in person. Um, we're going to run the two research prep weeks online in 2023 and beyond. But the remaining eight weeks, we'll give you the option of either doing all eight weeks online, all eight weeks in person, or mixing it up, doing some of the weeks, not even contiguous weeks, some of the weeks in person, some of the weeks online. Um, and that, that's what we think of when we think of a hybrid program. Um, in other ways, the program will remain the same. We expect to offer financial assistance for, as we have in the past, not just for to cover tuition, but also to cover housing and shuttle um, expenses. I'm really proud to report the statistics of the 2022 uh, program. We had 326 interns, and as we do every year, um, somewhere between 15 and 20% of our intern pool each year have done SIP before, one or two times in the past. So this year there were 56 returning interns out of the 326. Um, we had more schools represented this year than ever before. 
173 high schools, of which nearly 100 were schools from which we've never had students in SIP before. And we count schools in a very specific way. I want to be clear on that. Sometimes there are schools whose names are the same. They fall under the same uh, larger administration, but they have campuses, different campuses, sometimes different campuses in the same city, sometimes different campuses in different cities in the same country. And indeed, uh, if I think about United World Colleges, they have campuses all over the world. So when I say high schools, I mean specific campuses. Uh, we had of our 326 interns, as is always the case, the majority uh, were from the state of California, that is homes and or schools uh, in the state of California. If an intern's home was in California or their school was in California, they counted in this 229. Um, there, many of the, those 229 still had to come a long way from home because California is a big state. And um, something like three dozen of the students were from far enough away, Central California, Southern California, that um, they practically about as far away as being an out-of-state student. Now, um, we had 36 out-of-state students, um, and uh, they came from 18 different states. So the total of 19 states represented in the program. Um, and um, there were 36 out-of-state interns. So on average, two out-of-state, um, in, uh, two, two interns for each uh, non-California state. We had a total of 68 international interns representing 22 countries. So um, this is, uh, if you now, if you're following these numbers, if you're really good with your math, if you add up 229, and 36 and 62, you'll notice that the number exceeds 326. In fact, I'm doing the math in my head right now and it adds up to 333. You can check my math. If someone could please check my math. 68 plus 36 plus 229 add up to 333. So that's seven more than the number of interns. And that's because we have seven instances where a student is, has a home somewhere, let's say in California, but attends school in a different state or attends school in a different country, or we have a, a, a student who lives in one country but attends school in a different country. We've double counted in those cases because we feel the impact of SIP is experienced not just by the fellow students of the SIP intern, but also their siblings and family, um, and that therefore they have an impact both on the place where they live and in the place where they study in case those happen to be uh, you know, in different states or different countries. So that's my explanation for why the numbers add up the way they do. Uh, we had 95 different projects in the SIP program this year, uh, which is about what we had last year. And they were across 20 different subject areas. This is the largest number of different subjects we've ever had, larger by one than the previous record of 19. Um, these are the statistics. There were 1383 completed applications. That is all parts of the applications were completed and the application fee was either paid or waived, uh, but that's significantly fewer than the total number of applications started, which is in excess of 2000. Um, both of these numbers, 1383 and 2210, are significantly larger than we've ever had before. And the larger, the, uh, each year, this is true, the largest number of applications each year is the previous year. And so this year we exceeded last year is what I'm trying to say. Um, we gave out a little over a quarter of a million dollars in, um, in various forms of uh, need-based financial assistance. Um, we waived program fees for, um, uh, for a little over 60 um, students, 100% waivers for most of the, uh, of the students who uh, earn need-based scholarships, and 175% program fee waiver. Um, we 
that represents about a fifth of our SIP cohort of this year. Uh, we waived uh, uh, a bunch of application fees, only 6% of the applicants, that's uh, whoever asked for an application fee waiver. We don't go through the whole vetting of need based or not. If anyone asks, we, we uh, offer a fee waiver. We did that this year. And um, we continued something we started last year, um, which is to, for the neediest of our students, to give out stipends. We give, give out $1,000 stipends to three of our students this year. Um, this graph right here shows you the growth of SIP uh, over, the, over the 14 years of the program. Uh, it's remarkable to think that um, you know, when we started, we were 100th the size uh, we are, we were this year or last year. We, we're well in excess of 300 students e each of the last two years. And, but we started with three students in 2009. They were, all three were from the same high school. So the number of high schools has also grown more than a hundred fold. It's gone from one high school to, as you heard, 173 different high schools represented this year. Um, there are other ways to measure uh, the growth of the program. We have a total of 366 high schools represented in 14 years. That's a huge growth given that there was only one high school represented the first of those 14 years. Uh, a total of nearly 2,000 uh, cases of students participating in the program, 1831 participants. And here I'm double counting. So if a SIP intern did the program one year and came back to the second or third, We've had one instance of a student doing SIP four years in a row. We counted them four times. So this is the number of instances of participation and um, the number of unique times uh, someone did the SIP program, number of unique individuals in the SIP program was 1537. And that difference, I'm gonna try and do that in my head, is uh, 194. So there are 194 instances um, is that 194? Did I get that right? Um, 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 do I? 294. My my bad. Sorry. Um, yeah, 296. Sorry, 296. Um, so there are um, nearly 300 instances of students doing this program for um, you know multiple times, you know, second, third, fourth times. Uh, over the 14 years of the program. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and say that as many of you know, most of you know, hopefully, um, SIP is deeply committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, these words are thrown around with gay abandon uh, all the time. But um, I want to, you know, it means different things to different people. I, I want to say what it means to me. Uh, and I, I mean me personally, but um, each of the SIP team members can speak to what it means to them. Uh, we strongly believe, um, I, I believe as a team, in diversity through inclusion. And for me, uh, when you achieve diversity by being inclusive, uh, only then can you unlock the full intellectual potential that resides in this 14 to 18 year um, age group across the world only when you make your program open to everyone and you welcome everyone and you support everyone, irrespective of their background, irrespective of their circumstances, only then do you un uh, unlock the full intellectual potential of the world. And that's what we need to achieve excellence. That's achieving true excellence. You know, we can't call ourselves excellent if we only remain accessible to students who have access to resources. Um, we uh, we wouldn't be, um, we, I wouldn't be satisfied. I don't think any member of the SIP team would be satisfied with our growth if it weren't also becoming uh, more diverse, more global, uh, if the program weren't um, moving in that direction every year. Um, in this spirit, we have gone beyond SIP and come up with a different acronym that really captures the spirit and essence of uh, what SIP is about, but what, what is needed 
to work towards creating equity in STEAM. Um, SIP and the related programs you're about to hear about achieve this through critical thinking in the context of open-ended research that is closely mentored by a world expert in that field. Um, we um, think that a natural progression whereby a student first um, takes a very simple um, dip, dipping their toe in the water. Um, they do this through a program we run called Shadow the Scientist. I won't go into the details here, but this is an eavesdropping opportunity. Uh, there's a phrase about it later on. Uh, but it's, we started this in 2020. This is an opportunity for, for anyone. You don't have to be a high school student. Anyone, anywhere, anywhere in the world with a Zoom connection can eavesdrop on scientists and science in action, ongoing, uncurated, unpolished, really watching an experiment take place, interacting with the scientists. That's what Shadow the Scientist is. Um, once you've done that and you decide, no, I want to be more than dipping my toe in the water, I want to be in the water like the people who are already in there, the water temperature feels right to me, you want to learn the swim strokes. And we do that through a um, couple of flavors of programs. We teach Python in the context of astronomy research. And my colleague, um, Gio Chavez, teaches R, the programming language R, in the context of research and computational biology. Um, there's, of course, a deep dive after that, and SIP is one of those deep dives. Uh, there's another deep dive called We Are Stardust. This is something led by uh, Professor Emmett Lee at Arizona State University. SIP is proud to collaborate with her. I'll, uh, again, I'll have a, uh, another phrase about this in a moment. And then there are things you can do after the plunge, which is take part in the Global Sphere Network. You can be an alumni buddy, as some of you have been this year. We like to track the trajectories of our alumni. There's a teachers in SIP program. There's a community college uh, students in SIP program, TSIP and CSIP. And then there's the peer-to-peer -peer college and career network, uh, the P2C2N. Um, just a quick description of these things. That's our Crest logo, creating equity in STEAM. Hope you can see the C-R-E-S-T. Since it was born in Santa Cruz, it makes sense for it to have the shape of a wave. Um, and uh, you know, Santa Cruz, for those of you who don't know, is a, is a surfing town, is an important uh, stop in the surfing circuit. And those are some of the logos, most of the logos of the umbrella, uh, of the programs under the umbrella of Crest. Um, most of these things have been born out of SIP, offshoots of SIP, but they really represent a ramp that leads up to the difficult, deep engagement that you heard about from our interns today. Uh, it unifies the various STEAM educational initiatives that have been born out of SIP, and many of these are driven by alumni and parents. Uh, so Shadow the Scientist is eavesdropping on scientists doing science, as I mentioned, uh, Python and Research, um, Python um, and Recom Bio uh, teach these two programming languages, Python and R, um, but they teach it in the context of actual research. I'll say a word about We Are Stardust here. It's led by Professor Annette Lee. And it's, these are projects that explore a beautiful intersection between art, culture, and STEM. And as someone who's an artist and a scientist, and someone who's, of course, has a, a culture and tradition behind him, I really appreciate this intersection. Um, we Are Stardust embodies a, a beautiful Native American idea of two-eyed seeing, where you look through one eye, you can look through one eye with a Western lens, you can look through another eye with an indigenous lens, and you can, but the important thing is to look through both eyes for the benefit of all. And um, so teachers and SIP, we've been able to embed teachers and pre-service teachers through a partnership with the STAR program at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Uh, we have community college students in SIP through a pa partnership with Foothill and De Anza College in the Bay Area. Um, a few more, Global Sphere Network is a community of practice for those who engage high school students in STEAM research or wish to engage 
um, students in STEAM research. And it was really led by SIP and the New York Academy of Sciences, but the other founding partners were reputable programs at Harvard, Berkeley, the American Museum of Natural History, and Rockefeller University. Uh, the peer-to-peer -peer college and career network takes advantage of the fact that our alumni, many of our alum, alumni are now in college. They've undergone the difficult and you know, the hard transition from school to college, and they can give advice about that. Uh, some have transitioned into jobs, and of course, parents who have seen their children go through this. We have a wonderful alumni buddies program that Sierra has sustained, that Christy Toll started. We had 16 alumni buddies in 2022. Thank you for your wonderful support. And we have a beautiful faculty advisory committee spanning a wide range of subjects. These are UCSC faculty. I put Sam Severance's name here, even though he's not an official member of the faculty advisory committee, he has advised us on many wonderful things. He's a faculty member in the education department who studies STEM education in particular. All right. Um, oops. Um, sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to thank our advisory council here very briefly. I'm just going to flash this up very quickly. Abby Davis um, is someone we're looking to uh, welcome back to our team. Um, we have um, several alumni parents here. You're going to hear from um, one of them, Mitesh Dhruv, who uh, we are happy to welcome in, uh, as the newest member of the advisory council. Um, and we have an alumni council of um, you know, past interns, you see the years in which they took part. Um, again, they've been a fantastic force in not just organizing the alumni buddy program, but other things as uh, many other aspects of SIP, the social life uh, of SIP, especially in this virtual incarnation. Um, I promised I'd show you a member, uh, uh, the pictures of members of the team. This year, the SIP program is mostly run by um, the six of us. Um, our program assistants, um, Sanjana, Mark, and Ezekiel, pictured on the right from left to right. Uh, you've met Sierra, Anand, and myself, of course. And um, this picture of the three program assistants is actually cropped and zoomed in from this picture over here that also features our fearless operations coordinator, Anand Laldria, and they're demonstrating how the SIP t-shirt this year was too large for each and every one of them. Um, we have many partner organizations, too many to name and thank, but uh, most of our partner schools are uh, in California, one is in New York, but our partner organizations are um, some of them are US wide and um, some of them are global. Um, some of them are international. Um, special thanks to many people inside and outside UCSC. Most of the people in this list are, are or were at UCSC. Uh, we have a couple of people from Google, um, Jeff and Heidi and Madhukar and Angela um, and Maggie. Um, Ann Lo used to be at Amazon Web Services, has been a huge supporter of our program. Um, I don't think I've missed any other, oh, Gordon Ringold has retired from UCSC, but used to be the director of Silicon Valley Initiatives. So these are, um, it's their support that's ma that makes this program possible. Continued support. I wanted to put up this quote from Kayla Bartel. She was an intern in astronomy in 2019 and 2020, and was a SIP mentor this summer. Uh, I won't read it out, I'll let you read it. Um, I want to um, hand it over to Mitesh next. Uh, Mitesh, do you have slides you'd want to show or how are we doing this? No, we'll just uh, roll without slides as uh, we can. Okay. Uh, I'm going yeah. to stop sharing then, if that's okay. So you can see the people. Thanks. So I can do a brief introduction of Mitesh just to make sure everyone knows who he is and why he's here. As Raja said, thank you so much for joining us today, Mitesh, and for reaching out to us and agreeing to be uh, the newest member of our SIP Advisory Council, which is driven by parents like you. Um, Mitesh uh, is um, 
is an accomplished public company CFO. And this is one of the pieces of expertise that he brings to us. He was voted the best CFO in software across America for three consecutive years, which I met him and then I met, then I learned this fact. And so I think if I had known this about you before I met you, Matesh, I would have been much more intimidated. Um, but you, he used to work on Wall Street and he's now um, a finance lecturer at Stanford. And so thank you so much for being here with us and joining kind of one of our main steering committees with helping us kind of find our way as a program, especially during these years of transition with growing Crest. So um, thank you so much for being here. And just, we'd love to hear your overall thoughts about SIP. And I know you had some questions for us and wanted to have more of a conversation than just giving a talk. So thank you so much. Yeah, sure. No, a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's uh, It's been uh, stellar being watching the SIP program uh, through the lens of my daughter, obviously. And I think the, the overall thoughts for me on SIP, you know, reminds me of a uh, recent experience we had. Uh, my daughter, who is, of course, a SIP intern, Anya, she's uh, enamored with uh, roller coasters. And so, you know, this summer, uh, she wanted to go ride some Six Flags roller coaster in um, uh, some, it's called Daredevil something. Uh, I'm a roller coaster guy, so I didn't know anything. I said, okay, you know what? Let's do it. I'll take the plunge with you. And, you know, I'm a finance guy, as you said, so I want to keep things efficient. So I said, hey, Anya, you're doing all this internship. So we'll go in, we'll do this roller coaster, we'll come out. So we go to this park, we do this scary roller coaster. And then I noticed that there are some other roller coasters uh, alongside this roller coasters, which are also awesome. So we did that. And then it was a nice breezy shady day. So we had lunch in the greens. So we did that. And then whilst coming back, we thought, you know, there was this Marine show going on. So we also then attended this Marine show. And of course, then you have to have burger and fries while you return. So we had this full day uh, started out as going to this one roller coaster ride, but then we did this entire thing the, for the full day. SIP to me was, and then when we were coming back, I just, uh, on the drive home, it reminded me of SIP, right? That Anya, when she started SIP, it was about this one internship she was going to do. But then, you know, it was this, uh, she told me that, hey, there's this career uh, fair where people talk about their majors. And there are this alum, alumni show where all the alums come about, you know, and tell about what they have done. And then Raja talked about how to do research. And then, uh, you know, there was this bracelet night, an activity night. And I was like, wow, this, this SIP, SIP theme park is much more than just a, uh, is one roller coaster. So this is like a fun experience along with such an, such a rich uh, academic experience. That's the way I would describe SIP, at least for me, uh, through the lens of my daughter. That's Mitesh, fantastic. <laughs> Mitesh, I, I, when you were talking about a theme park, I was, my, I was scratching my brain figuring out how you're going to close this loop. <laughs> But and, you know, no pun intended. But you know, uh, closing the loop on a roller coaster means something. But I am, I am absolutely amazed by this connection. Steve has never been described as a theme park, but uh, <laughs> thank you for that. With lots of different rides. It is. <laughs> it's so great to hear about uh, that experience through Anya's eyes. What, what educationally, what did she get out of the experience besides going to the SIP theme park? Yeah. You know, educationally, as you know, I was talking to, all, uh, I was look, looking, uh, listening to all the other interns present, and educationally, I feel it's a very, very rich experience, right? So for Anya, her her theme was uh, exploring African carnivores, which was so unique, and I'm sure that every each and every student who was here, along with their mentors, had a very unique angle, right? All projects look so amazing; it's hard to choose from. And so what she learned, of course, she's a freshman, right? So, you know, expectations are uh, set that way. But, you know, she learned a lot of things, right? Tabulation of data, uh, analysis, logging of uh, video sheets, whatnot. And so that's one element, right, of it. But I think for me, uh, as an executive uh, uh, for over, uh, over two decades, for me, it's the soft skills that also are, if not more important, right? So what do you learn as a SIP uh, intern? You learn to present. You are presenting in front of all these people today, which is okay. If you've never presented, it's a, it's a new uh, plunge you're taking. That's one. 
it's about commitment seeing uh, i was i was uh, listening to uh, the the previous uh, one of the new mentors speak right that yeah it's a two month commitment and you've got all these things going on so but you are committed so that's commitment you learn collaboration you collaborate with your peers you collaborate with the mentor uh, that's a very important skill uh, in your real life uh, and then you learn confidence right confidence to make mistakes to screw up all the time so those are skills which cannot be replicated. It's I feel it's a dry run for real life in my mind, Sierra. I agree. Well, and it's it's been such a treat for me this summer because Anya made friends with me on Friendship Bracelet Night, which you mentioned. And then I got to meet her in person just by chance over the summer. And so it was really fun for me. And this is kind of one of the pieces of the in-person experience that I miss is seeing all of our students present on presentation day, having gone through the summer of the experience with them and watching them grow. So it's been cool to see her. And I was able to see part of her presentation and I saw her there. I know you all are on the East Coast in the hotel room. So I saw the same background behind her as she just so eloquently presented. Um, what are like seeing her from a father perspective and seeing your daughter grow over the course of the summer? Are there any memorable moments that stand out to you of watching her growth over the course of this program? Uh, memorable events. I think the entire, if I were to summarize, there was so, so many memorable events or moments for me watching her. I think the entire summer was so memorable. But if I were to uh, say pick two uh, moments which really stood out to me, uh, the first one was when, whenever Anya would have to meet her mentor. There would be this part nervousness, part excitement, uh, part exhilaration. So to, to watch that part that, oh, you know what, dad, I'm meeting with Whitney today. It's going to be so fun. And we're going to talk about this and that. So that connection, like the mentor obviously doesn't realize, right? Because I've been in the situation mentoring a lot of uh, uh, young professionals in the Valley. As a mentor, you just say words, you know, just, you know, casually, but that the impact the mentor has on the mentees is just amplified like 100,000 X. So that was so memorable. Just to meet with her mentor one-on-one -on -one was amazing. And then the second one was uh, interesting, right? One day, one day I walk into uh, Anya's room, it's pitch dark, right? And uh, she has her laptop on and she never has this normally, like the lights are obviously on and she has a big uh, bowl of popcorn. And I was like, Anya, what is this? What are you doing? And she's like, yeah, dad, you know, go away. I have movie night. I was like, movie night? What are you talking about? She's like, yeah, Sip is doing a movie night. And I was like, okay, so which movie are you watching? And she's like, I'm watching this movie called Gifted. And I was like, hmm, Gifted. Did you not see this movie just yesterday? She's like, yeah, but I want to do this movie night. So I think for me, that just made it so special that this was a, a program where Raja, you... Um, all of you guys, right? Uh, Anand, you guys just like bring it home with so many different touch points, uh, soft, hard, like fun, education. And the, the effort you guys put in just comes through, right? So for me, those were like two very special moments, Sierra. Hmm. Thank you so much for sharing those. You have such enthusiasm that comes through the screen and it's been so fantastic to get to know you this summer. And I, I think one of the first times you and I met, I told you, you know, there's, I speak over the course of the year from January when we start to do some recruitment up until today and like in the next couple of weeks, there's hundreds of parents that I speak with who call the SIP line to ask questions or come through the email or, you know, get in touch with me during the application process or talk with me about their students' needs during the summer. Um, and maybe one or two per year reach out and say that they want to get involved in a different way. And I'm always like, what, what, and I'm asking you this personally, like what inspired you to not just get in touch and say, thanks for the program, but to kind of put yourself out there more and say, I want to actually be involved and like spend time with you all and, and share, share my energy. What inspired you to do this? This has just been wonderful for us to get to meet you. No, th th thank you. Thank you for, for that. And it's a bit of an emotional answer to this, right? What I'm about to share, uh, which is, you know, what Raja hit upon in his earlier slide, which is a diversity through inclusion. 
And living in Silicon Valley, you forget it's a very monolithic culture, right? People with resources, you know, it's the world of haves and have nots. And so this mission of, of, of Raja and you and Anand every, just really spoke to me that education can be an equalizer and it can be very diverse through inclusion. So that mission really, really hit me, uh, you know, straight through, pierced my heart. So that's one. It's like, you know, when, when uh, and I wanted to be a small part of the mission in whichever way I can. It's like, you know, when, when JFK uh, went to, to NASA, you know, when, when people were, you know, launching this first uh, uh, thing to the moon, he asks the janitor, hey, what are you doing? He said, hey, I'm here to put a man on the moon. So for me, I want to be the janitor. <laughs> I want to be that person who can be, play a very small part in your very big vision. So that's part one. And the second part I do feel is that uh, all of us, right? Each and every one of us here in the screen and around the world, we have a special skill set. We can contribute in some way, in any way, and you just have to open the door of your mind and just, you know, uh, embrace this. So I think those two things really, really uh, uh, stood out to me. And, you know, I just truly believe that I do want to leave everything I touch uh, in a better place than I found it. So those are the reasons I reached out to, to Raja and you. And it's been a nothing but a privilege to, to know all of you and the, the mission there since. Thank you so much. Well, I just happened to glance at the clock and we're, we're over time, but it's sort of one of those things where we set the schedule so we can make the schedule and we can take a few more minutes to wrap up. But what are your final, just any final parting thoughts for us today? Yeah, no, I have a couple of, you know, really quick parting thoughts, but I, I would not let you guys go without, I do have one question for you, Sierra. You cannot just be <laughs> let out of the hook like that. And one question for you, Raja. So I'll keep my, my final thoughts very brief because I want to hear from you guys more. So look, my final thoughts are, are this, right? With any program, A, first of all, thank you so much for, for doing this for all of us. And I, I know I speak for all the parents and all the interns. You guys provide access to the, the best research projects in the world. So, so thank you for that. And I think this program just in life, right? It's, it's what you make of it. Uh, it's like input equals output, right? So if you put in a lot of work into the program, you will benefit a lot. And this is not a program, right? I lied. It's an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem underpinned by elegance, education, empowerment. And you all here in this committee make it happen. So my final thoughts are, uh, we are, I'm very grateful. I speak for all the parents to be a part of this uh, program. And I know Anya was like beyond the moon presenting today. And I think, uh, you know, just like I bought, Raja, I forgot to tell you that I bought an annual pass to that uh, California Adventure theme park. And I'm going to, I'm going to be an annual <laughs> member, a recurring member to, to the, to the SIP program. So those are my final thoughts. But on that note, Sierra, let me ask you, let me uh, turn the turn the, the dial the other way and ask you a question. What is the most fun part of your job? You know, it's so funny because people ask me this a lot. And I think I, I've run different kinds of summer programs for whatever reason, this has become my niche in life is summer programs for youth. And all, all over the map, you know, from science programs, education programs, residential programs, day programs, younger kids, older kids, what have you. And I think when you do something like run a summer program, people think that it's really fun all the time. And I um, recently heard an interview with a movie producer who was like, the, the ratio of the fun parts to all the parts that you have to do to make the fun happen is like... 99 parts things that you have to do to make the fun happen and one part the fun that happens you know and so it really is a labor of love year round with the massive amount of detail and communication and coordination and just kind of like this this orchestra that you have to kind of conduct to make these things happen and and I didn't realize how much I had missed the in-person component until I had the opportunity just a couple of times this summer to bump into SIP interns in person. And, and then today again, too, seeing the presentations and hearing all of the interns share their thing. Because when I talk with 
parents and potential partners and potential interns and potential mentors and potential donors and all the people that I talked to about the program, I kind of tongue in cheek say, you know, it's about world peace, you know, like we're here to make these connections so that the students have a wide global network and they think about the global citizenry and what have you, but really that vast action happens with little individual actions of little individual students doing big ideas and big things. And it's really, so to, to hone in on like my answer to your question is the funnest part really is, and I forget it because I'm such a road hardened old jaded administrator, you know, that it's really getting to know the students and their personalities and their passions. You know, I was in the presentations today and one of the ACS projects interns, I forget which one it was. It would be great if I could name the intern like that. She said, we wanna save the world through social media. And I was just like, you know, as kind of like someone who's on the, the Gen X borderline over here, I was just like, that's a phrase I never thought I would hear in my life that we'd save the world through social media. And so it's just, it's really fun for me. I mean, my background, my graduate work was in clinical psychology and Raja and I were talking about our gifts the other night. And he told me that my gift is people. And I never would have said that except for that it is like our greatest joys come from our gifts. And I just really enjoy watching students transform over the course of the summer program. And SIP is so long that you really can take a before and after picture and see a student get to know themselves and who they are in such a profound way. And so that's what I love is like, it really is, there's a lot that goes into it and just getting to be around the students in the summer and see their process and watch them finish at the other end and have these insights about themselves is there, there's nothing like it. And I know that each one of them, these hundreds of students during the summer take that work out into the world with them in different ways. And those ripple effects go in ways that I will never know. You know, and that's kind of what I love about it, too, is that I don't need to know exactly everything that the students do. But anyway, now I'm the one taking up time. What's your question for Raja? <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. No, that, what, what a great, thoughtful answer. Great, thoughtful answer. And, and finally, I do have one for you, Raja. Uh, just cannot uh, have this uh, without asking this question, which is a burning question for me. Uh, what exactly? Because you've been doing this since there were three students in uh, one school. Now, uh, 100x. And it's it's a slog, right? In a way, it's a journey. You are you are doing this like day in day out for like more than uh, uh, fourteen years, if I have my math correctly, two thousand nine to two thousand twenty two. And then, I mean, at times it must be lows, highs. You know, you know, it's like uh, you have a day job. What is that? The two or three things, Raja, that really uh, ignite you and drive you to for this mission. Oh, thanks, Mitesh. Thanks for asking. This roller coaster doesn't stop. That's the problem. There's no attendant. It's a runaway. Um, that's, I don't know how to make this stop, is the honest truth. I, I don't know what I would do uh, when, you know, SIF is something I'm no longer engaged in or Crest is no longer something I'm engaged in. I really will find myself at a complete loss. Um, you know, we're all, I'm sure, uh, in some way, uh, some of our experiences, you know, each of us is. And um, what we do with those experiences, though, can be, you know, can be different. I mean, sometimes you've had an experience and you want to give that back. And sometimes you haven't had an experience and you wished you had it. So you want to give it to somebody else because you know how much it meant to you to not have it. Um, and um, SIP is both of those things. So I, um, you know, I never had a research experience as, an, as a high school student or even as a college student. And, uh, and I love doing research. I love it so much. I've been doing, I've been doing it for 37 years. Um, I love it. I love doing it. I want other people to take part in it. Um, that's the part that says I've had this experience. I want others to have it. But then the part that I didn't have that I want others to have is when they get involved in this. You know, I don't think high school is too early to get involved in research. Um, research is, uh, is difficult, but re research is also easy. It's accessible by this, this age group. Um, I mean, I, I see Ivana on my screen right next to me. Um, many of the things we do uh, can 
can be done very well by a well-trained young person. You don't need decades of training to do some of the tasks we do. Um, that's the truth about research in almost every discipline. Um, how's that? that? No, that is, no, I mean, I just love the way you summarized uh, just so elegantly that, okay, these are the experiences you either wished you'd had or you, you, you want to give it to people, the experiences you've already had, but in a different time, uh, time scale. So my, thank you so much for, for this uh, amazing articulation. Uh, and I will just turn it back to you guys for a, uh, for your closing remarks. And, uh, but thank you so much. It was uh, amazing. Thank you so much from, from my side. Thank you. Thank Mitesh. you, Mitesh. I have two words to close, which is to say, join us. Uh, if you haven't already, join us in this, on this roller coaster ride that is now not just SIP, but also Crest. And you can join us in, you know how to reach us, you know where we are, we're not going to move anywhere. Um, please reach out to us if you, if, you, if you feel you want to be involved in any way, really, any, absolutely any way possible. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you for um, being patient with us as we've taken so much more than we uh, uh, so much more time than we said we would but <laughs> well, well done everyone thank you so much raja and just a reminder to everyone that our wonder social platform will be open for a while after this i think um anand and the program assistants we're going to put the link and the password as a reminder in the chat but it's also on our on our presentation day web page and so Raja will be in there if you want to have a chance to say hello and just thank in person in real time, person to person as much as we can be. Um, and we'll have someone there kind of re-airing the, the slideshow, the memory slideshow. If you didn't get to see that when you came in, we showed it in the few minutes before this room opened. And thank you all. Thank you to all the speakers. Thank you to all the mentors from the summer. It's, it's really such a huge, widespread, decentralized effort to make this whole program happen. And so thank you to everyone. Um, one, one more announcement, Sierra. That is, we have a SIP reunion. That's what I was going to uh, say next. Yeah. Oh, of course. Sorry. Go ahead. No, Please. you're fine. I was going to say, yeah. um, when, when Raja says... I'm seeing in the I'm I'm laughing at the chat. Yes, that was on our on our last obscured slide that we were kind of skipping through is when Raja says join us, he doesn't mean just in coming to sip again for another summer and being involved in Crest, but we have an annual sip reunion in December. So this year it falls on Thursday, December 15th. Mark your calendars. Um, we hope to have it be a hybrid in-person and live streamed event. We um, have done it in person before the pandemic. And then during the pandemic, we live streamed it. Um, and this year we uh, will be doing it in person and live streaming it. So we will have speakers and attendees from all over the world, um, both in person and online. And we're just really thrilled to finally be stepping back in person um, and kind of dipping our toes back in the water, as we like to say. So mark the calendar for that. Um, if you have any questions about how you can be involved with your energy and time and resources um, in any of our mission, if you want to learn more about it, do get in touch with me or Raja, and we'll be happy to talk with you more about the work that we're doing. Um, so I think with that, uh, to 24 minutes after we said we would end, I would love to invite everyone to join us in wonder and have a chance to chit chat for a little while. And then just say say goodbye. And as we said, the password to to wonder is that's a sip, kind of our version of that's a wrap. That's a sip for us. This is the end of our summer, and it's so anticlimactic because we're all just going to click the little red leave button and be done. But thank you all so much for joining us. I feel like I'm getting profuse at this point with my thank yous, but I really mean it. It um, takes a huge effort of, of love from everyone involved. So I'm just really grateful to everybody who was involved in making this happen this year. Okay, so we will, so I kind of want to direct Raja, you need to get over to sit or over to wonder so that people can we'll shake your virtual we'll hand. And <laughs> thank you all so much.